Hi, I'm Hamza San. I'm an artist and writer and curator. I'm currently supposed to be in residence in the Netherlands, but due to the art world being shut down, I've been sent home to live with my parents. But this moment of enforced self-isolation, where I spent nearly two months trapped in my parents' house in London, has also reconnected me. I think tidying your room is the best form of curatorial practice. I file things, refile things, reclassify things, reconnect things from before I was born. So beautiful photographs of my family and parents from the 1960s when they immigrated here from West Bengal in India to London. And they've been married since 1964. You live in this state of perpetual anxiety and uncertainty. I think there's something about living with your Asian parents, which is the best form of post-colonial theory. You really rediscover in a way that's beyond the pretentious art world, beyond documenta, beyond elite art colleges and their post-colonial theory departments. You recognise the way in which my mum may look at a film from the 50s in an entirely different way. And so I've watched this sort of classic cinema with her. Then you have a more down-to-earth understanding of the way other people see the world. Shower Radicals was written as a book in 2017. It's been translated into other languages, so this is the Italian edition, recalled Intro Fada. So my entire life, whether in employment, in school, I was bullied, demeaned, made to be a second-class citizen because the simple crime of being quiet. Now, if we experience discrimination for being of a different race, we have a whole trajectory, decolonial movements, the civil rights movement, Malcolm X. If we experience discrimination because of gender, we have the history of the suffragettes, hashtag me too. If we experience discrimination on the basis of class, we have the toll puddle martyrs, the working class movement, the trade union movement. But what things do we have to turn to when we experience discrimination, bullying, alienation for the mere fact of being quiet? I didn't have a liberation movement or a legency or icons that I could call my own. And hence, I just made one up. The first chapter of the book is the constitution Draft constitution for the Shy People's Republic of Asbergistan. We, the people's Asbergistan, embody the Shy People's Republic of Asbergistan, the sanctuary, beacon and homeland of oppressed, shy, introvert and autistic spectrum people. And understand that our nation's crown and principle will serve as a bulk work against the hegemony of the extrovert world order, marking a decisive step towards the fraternal and sortorial collaboration and coexistence of all shy peoples in autonomous worldwide union. I acknowledge that successive generations of our people have suffered rejection, bullying, humiliation, belittlement, exclusion, alienation, discrimination and disadvantage at the hands of the global system of extrovert supremacism, which has dispossessed and deprived us of our right to introspective life, self-esteem, equality and peace. Demand the reversal of the operations of extrovert exclusive representation in Congress and debate chamber parliaments, acknowledging the system's failure to listen to and represent its subjects and citizens. We take Lao Tzu's dictum, the quieter you become, the more you are able to hear, as the foundational principle of our democratic institutions. Cherish the richness of inner life, silence, contemplation, reflective solitude, intimate company, investigative depth, peer-reviewed truth, which forms the basis and legitimacy of the state and government to determine our destiny. Shy Power Chapter of the Constitution of the Shy People's Republic of Asbergistan Fundamental Rights and Duties of Citizens 
Article 17. Introversion is inviolable. No person may disturb its peace or violate its freedom. The state shall guarantee freedom from small talk, freedom from coercive visual distraction, freedom from enforced jollity or coerced happiness, freedom from extrovert harassment during leisure time and national holidays, the right to stay in one's home during leisure time and national holidays, freedom from superficial judgment based on outward appearances and consumer choices, freedom from frivolous public media assaults, freedom from the stigmatisation for the pursuit of an introvert life, freedom from extrovert epistemic violence including all accusations of being antisocial or aloof. Disrupting the concentration of Aspergistan citizens will be taken seriously and punished in full accordance with the law. So when the Italian edition of Sharadike came out, it sort of was around the time in which Covid struck and Italy was the most dangerous place in the whole of Europe. And Slovenia bought it. And so I got all this fan mail from um, Italy. So this person here has made this this woodcut, which is like a stamp, which you can stamp with the shy power salute here. Hashtag shy power. Check that on Instagram. And people from Italy wrote to me around the time of the way in which shy radicals and the Aspergistan movement gave them strength. They felt they were like in Aspergistan. They felt they were part of an avant-garde movement. And when you read the laws of Aspergistan, and when you reread the book under each political generation, each political moment, there's a whole new vocabulary that comes through. The arts press are beginning to recognise the influence of Shah Radicals, and especially its re-readings at the time of the COVID pandemic. So in Freeze magazine, you've seen a whole article in Disability Arts Online Many people from around the world that recognise its new reading. Extrovert supremacy kills, and that's why I dedicated my life to overthrowing an oppressive, selfish, self destructive system. Employment in workplaces, we're taught about assertiveness skills, but sitting in silence in a gallery, that's why I went to galleries. And when they're made it accessible, they bought skateboards and DJs and aspects of hyper extrovert culture. Imagine we could learn contemplation skills. The government should train these people who selfishly sought these self-destructive methods of pubs and clubs and gatherings. How to cope to be alone. So during this period of time, we've seen human rights groups publish material about prisoners and those under control orders. And even those who, in the Irish Troubles, suffered internment and were the worst forms of seclusion and the way in which they coped, built communities, created strength. And they're teaching me things today. So I'm reconnecting with some of the material of when I used to campaign against solitary confinement, when I used to speak for the 30,000 people on hunger strike in California you're against indefinite solitary confinement or the 80,000 people in solitary confinement in the US. For the prisoners in Guantanamo Bay who I befriended and campaigned for, these people have so much to teach us. And in some ways, what we experience now is what people in Gaza and Kashmir and oppressed zones, military zones, stuck in lockdown, where lockdown means daily life, where lockdown means oppressed nations, subjugated, controlled under militarised zones. They know how to cope with the most bare essentials. They know how to express gratitude towards love and humanity whilst experiencing the worst forms of oppression. So these people are my teachers. There's something about being indoors which is peaceful, which helps us reconnect re-inspire, get out of sync of the economy and something ultimately revolutionary. The world will not be the same 
after the end of the COVID pandemic. Shy power. <laughs>